Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna be creating these little furry, fuzzy bags that everyone has. I'm really excited for this tutorial because it is a quick one. It's gonna be like 30 minutes to make. I'm excited, I'm gonna be able to make a few today. I'm gonna do three different sizes. That's why I have three different fabrics here. I have the zebra one, I have this flower one, and of course I have a cow print one. So I'm gonna start with the smallest one first and we're just gonna get bigger from there. So the supplies we're gonna need are obviously the fabric for the outside of the bag, some liner fabric, some pins, and of course, some thread. For the pattern for this bag, I am just using an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper for the bag, okay? This isn't gonna be a mini bag, so I'm just cutting it out, just holding the piece of paper down and cutting around it. And you also wanna make sure that you cut it on the fold. That is gonna be, a, not a key thing, but it's just gonna make your life easier if you cut it on the fold. Next thing I'm doing is cutting the strap, and I'm also cutting it on the fold, and I'm making it about four inches wide, and then I'm doing it about 12 inches tall. And then for the liner, I'm just taking that letter-sized piece of paper and cutting it again on the fold, just like I did for the outside of the bag. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this large piece of fabric that we cut out, and we're gonna fold the right sides together, like so. Next we're gonna do is you're gonna take either your clips or your pins, and you're just gonna clip or pin the sides together. We're not gonna cut the bottom because why you know, make more work when it's already put together so we don't have to sew the bottom. So I'm just gonna clip all the sides together and then we're gonna jump onto the sewing machine. So now I'm just on my sewing machine and I'm just gonna do a straight stitch from the top to the bottom. My seam allowance is probably gonna be about 3 eighths of an inch. If you see on your sewing machine, you can just line it up. But I'm just gonna do a straight stitch. And then this is what it should look like after you're done the first side and then I'm just gonna do it to the other side now. Okay, so now I have it sewn like this. So what I'm gonna do is these bottom corners right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna snip them on an angle like so, if you can see this, just like this. So you want it snipped like this so when you turn it inside out, it actually looks nice to the corner and it's not all bunched up. So that's what I like to do for the corner of the bags is just snip it a little bit so there's less fabric inside. So now we're gonna put this aside and we're gonna work on the liner now. So we're doing the exact same thing we just did with the liner. We're putting the right sides together and then we're gonna just do a straight stitch on both sides. Also, don't forget to do a little snip on the corners of the liner. Okay, so now we have both pieces with the liner and the outside of the bag. They should look the exact same. So next we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this liner, the inside liner, to the right sides now. So you can flip it inside out, but you can leave the other one like so. And then once you have it nicely folded outwards like this, you can go ahead and put it inside of the bag. So they should look like this when you open the bag up. It should be the wrong side, and then in the middle here, both the right sides should be together. And again, for this step, you can either use pins or you can use clips, whatever you have. All you're doing is just clipping or pinning together the liner and the outside of the bag so it looks like this. So now that the bag is all clipped together, we can start sewing the liner to the front of the bag. So what I like to do for this is I don't sew the whole thing around just yet. We're gonna sew just about an inch and a half from the corner here to an inch and a half to the other corner on both sides of the bag. This is because we have to insert the strap still and we also have to flip the bag inside out or right side out. What I'm doing here is I'm just doing a straight stitch as I've explained a million times and I'm just doing a straight stitch with about a 3 8 seam allowance around there, you know, just enough, you know, so it doesn't like, you know, it's not too thin that it will start to tear. And then after I was done that, I just folded it right sides out and make sure the hole isn't too small because you'll have a little bit of trouble, you know, putting the whole bag through that little hole. So after I was done that, I went onto the strap and now I'm just putting the right sides together with the strap. And then once I was done that, I just hopped onto my sewing machine and I just did another straight stitch all the way down, three eighths around there. And then when I got to the end, all I did was do another straight stitch just cause you're gonna need a little seam at the end in order to flip it right side out. And now I'm just using a chopstick to actually turn this right side out. A pencil or anything kind of similar shape will work for this. But all I'm doing is on the side that 
I have that stitch on the one end, I'm just pushing the chopstick through and then obviously turning it inside out. And then after that, all I'm doing is with my sewing machine, I'm just doing a top stitch on the strap. This is optional. I like it just because it gives it a nice clean appearance. It keeps it nice and rigid and doesn't get all twisted, the strap. So this is what I prefer. And also with the furry fabric, you don't really see this top stitch anyways. It's very faint. It just gives it a nice, you know, more rigid look, the strap. So now you're going to take that strap and on each end, you're going to put each end in a different hole, I guess, <laughs> I don't know. In each end of the purse where you have that open hole, you're gonna put a strap. And then you're also gonna tuck in the outside of the fabric and the liner fabric in so it looks like what I have on the screen. And then you just wanna clip it so it just holds it nicely. Check, make sure the strap is not tangled. I've definitely done that once and it's very embarrassing to have a tangled strap after you're done the purse. So make sure it's not tangled. And then the next thing I'm doing is I'm just clipping around the whole bag because I'm gonna do a top stitch because I love doing top stitches. And then I'm also gonna just include it in sewing the strap. So you're just gonna do one full top stitch around the whole bag and then that's it. That's it. That's all you have to do is just add the top stitch that will actually sew in the strap. So that's it. It's pretty straightforward. And here it is, the final product. I, I love it. Look at it. It is just so cute. It's such a fun little mini bag. And it probably only cost me a dollar or two dollars. Like, really, it was so cheap. I hardly used any fabric for this, and I'm just impressed. I'm really impressed with it. I think it, it's cute. I think it looks good with my outfit, too. It just completes the look having a fun bag like this. So, I'm happy with it. This is what the liner looks like inside it is nice and soft i just i'm just so happy with it so now i'm just gonna challenge myself because i honestly think i can make one of these in under 30 minutes like i definitely think i could it really didn't take that long so i'm gonna challenge myself right now and i'm gonna put a timer on and see how fast i can make one of these bags and then after i'm done that i'm gonna show you how to make a big one that kind of looks like this you know the longer one so i'm not sure how to do that with some thicker fabric, because this fabric was quite thin, so it's a little bit more difficult with thicker fabric. Ready, set, go. kind of impressed with my craftsmanship to be honest. It actually doesn't look that bad. It actually kind of looks good. I'm really impressed with myself that I was able to actually have nice straight lines being that I was rushing the whole time. This is how the bag turned out. I love it. I love the length, I love the size. Like I actually prefer this one over the mini bag just because it's more versatile, but what you're probably waiting for is not really how the bag turned out. It's how long it took me. It took me 33 minutes and 49 seconds, which is not 30 minutes, but technically if I didn't break or bend my needle and I didn't run out of thread in my bobbin, it would have been under 30 minutes. I'm just gonna say it's a success because it was close enough and if those problems didn't go wrong, it would have been under 30 minutes. I definitely think so. So I'm gonna show you how to make this bag now with the thickest fabric because there is a couple tricks when you're working with thicker like fur fabrics. It's a little bit more difficult. So I'm gonna show you my little tips and tricks on how to make this bag like this, not a mini bag or make a big one. So let's begin the mix and final bag. So for the final bag, we're gonna do the exact same steps except we're just making the bag a little bit bigger and a little bit taller. Other than that, it's the exact same, except there are some little tips and tricks I'm just gonna tell you about when you're working with this thicker fur fabric because it's not as easy as the other two fabrics I would just worked with. This one's a little bit more trickier. So I'm gonna tell you a few tips. So after you're done getting all of your liner, your fabric, everything cut out, I'm just gonna pin it all together at once just because then you can save more time. But when you're sewing this fabric, I would recommend doing a bigger seam allowance. And the reason why I say that is because it's harder to sew and you're definitely gonna want more seam allowance. I don't know really how to explain it, but when you sew it, you'll figure it out. You need a bigger seam allowance. So I recommend 5 eighths for sewing this fabric. My next tip is to trim it, but don't trim it too close to your seam, but trim it a bit so you have the least amount of fabric 
inside the strap or inside the bag, I do trim the bag as well. So I just recommend trimming it so you don't have this excess amount of fabric inside. It just looks a lot better, okay? So that's my next tip. Also, when you're sewing the top stitch on your strap, if you do that, you're not really gonna see the stitch, so it's okay that you don't have like a steady hand. Next thing I am doing is I'm just pinning it all just like last time, except again, you want a bigger seam allowance. I would recommend 5 eighths around there. Unless you're like a really pro sewer, then you could go smaller, it's up to you. That's just my recommendation, so you don't have to take it. But after you're done that, I do recommend, or not after you're done that, before you're done that, <laughs> make sure the hole where you're gonna be flipping the fabric to the right side is bigger because this fabric's a lot thicker. So leave a bigger opening so you can flip your fabric to the right side or the bag to the right side. And then next, I am just clipping the straps on and make sure they're not twisted. That's another tip make sure they're not twisted. But the tricky part is this part. When you're sewing the straps to the bag, go very slowly over the straps because you might break a needle if you go too fast. Also, have a thick needle, have a heavy duty needle, a denim needle, whatever type of needle that's a little bit more heavier duty compared to your normal sewing needles. And then when you're going over the straps, don't be scared to just manually turn it and just go really slow just to make sure you don't bend the needle or break the needle or anything. Just go slow. It's way easier if you just go slow and then you can go normal speed when you do the sides of the bag when you're doing that top stitch because you're just doing one full stitch all the way around. But that's it for my tips. And finally, I am done all the bags now. This is how the last one turned out. I absolutely love it. This ended up being more like a medium sized one. This one is the large one and this is the mini one. So I will have all the dimensions on my blog post. It'll be linked down below in the description if you wanna go check it out. These are the three sizes, the small, medium, and large, and you can choose which size you wanna make and they'll all be on my blog post, like I mentioned. But let me know down in the comments which size is your favorite. I definitely think I like the large the best out of all of them just because it's the most versatile. I don't know. What do you guys think? Which size is your favorite? And if you do end up making one, be sure to tag me on Instagram at JennaFips because I want to see your bags. Like I always say do. I want to see what you guys create. So tag me on Instagram if you do make one. And that is it. That is it for my tutorial today. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.